how so, did you, how'd you transfer into so that? So what happened was I stuck with the, the natural federation. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was literally, I would say, probably the hottest federation mm -hmm. of all bodybuilding, even the IBB, because we were on TV. We were the only ones that were getting our competitions aired on television. That's crazy. And I was not only winning shows in the States, but I was traveling around the world. I was That's competing awesome. in Italy, uh, Budapest, uh, uh, you, you name it. I, I was traveling around the world and promoting bodybuilding. Uh, compete. I ended up turning pro in the Natural Federation. Went against some some big name guys, but I still had that itch because the 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 magazines were still showing the steroid guys, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know how I would stand against yeah. one of those guys. So I said, you know what? I'm going to leave the Federation, the Natural mm -hmm. Federation. I'm going to enter an NPC show. NPC mm -hmm. is the, is the amateur. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, show that I went to initially to check out. Yeah, that was the uh, Tournament of Champions. Yes. Yeah, they so still I, have it today, right? Yes, they, they still, do. They still have it. So I, I had to enter a, a local show, which I qualified, and I went right to the USA, which is the national, basically national championship. Mm -hmm. And I ended up taking fourth, my first shot, clean, no steroids. That's huge. And uh, But I remember seeing all the guys backstage from the magazines. I mean, mm -hmm. they knew who I was from the TV show, but like, you know, it was pretty cool to be backstage and amongst the best. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought long and hard. I think at that point I was about 25 and 26. I was still in school studying kinesiology, and uh, I really, like, started studying steroids and started mm -hmm. really studying, like, what it does because I saw, like, standing next to these guys, mm -hmm. I, I, I know I looked good, mm -hmm. but I was just missing a few things that mm -hmm. anabolics I knew was providing for them, and that yeah. was the hardness, the hardness of the muscle, the more fullness, mm -hmm. just bigger all around. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm going to commit. I'm already this far in. I, I want to give it a shot. And that's kind of how I fell into mm -hmm. bodybuilding slash anabolic steroids. And that's yeah. when I really started studying. I became a student mm -hmm. of getting ready for shows using anabolics. Yeah. From well, I mean, bro, like you, you looked crazy. You know, I mean, from the level you, you were probably at to the level you went to. I mean, it was just, it was insanity. I mean, I heard about you like before I even got to L.A. I heard about mm. you. You were in some pictures in some little little home yeah. wall gym. Right, and, right. You know, my, my buddies That's were cool, talking yeah. about you. And yeah, man, your name was up there for a while before I even I think it was like I even heard about you five years before I even got to LA. Yeah, it was crazy. I remember being at, at that same show, the USA, which was in Vegas, you know, it was a pretty prestigious show. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know a lot of the pros, but I met a lot of them there and mm -hmm. they were like they thought I was pro because they had seen me on TV. Yeah. And, well, how am I in so many magazines at that time? Right. You know, I was already shooting uh, publications. I already had sponsors as an amateur, so mm -hmm. I was one of the like the first amateurs at that level, making you know I was making almost ten grand a month at twenty six years old. And money like that now is like times four what it is yeah. right now. Yeah, Not even like, as IBB Pro. Yeah. I was only an NBC athlete That's too. Crazy, you know. So my aspirations at that point was I was going to leave the Natural Federation. I gave up my pro status mm -hmm. so I can start over, mm -hmm. work my way up. Which took me quite a while. Yeah. Because becoming pro in IFBB back then was probably one of the hardest things to do in any sport. Yep. You know, and uh, that's what I did. I, I, I committed. It took me another uh, six years of competing before I actually got my pro card in 2006. Wow, man. And that's a tough journey. I know I'm still competing for mine. So, yeah, so yeah. you know, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm yeah, like, you know how it is. I'm like 12, 12, 13 shows in or something like yeah, that. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's trying, it's, to, it's it's trying it's, to get it. Yeah, but it's it's tough to get. So that you guys just having your pro card, it's 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 a huge accomplishment. Yes. You know, for bodybuilding, it's a very, very prestigious title to have. And um Yeah, you know, it's like my it's hats like, off to anybody. Yeah, for bodybuilding, it's like our credentials. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. like having a, a master's in whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what IBB Pro Card, that's how you can kind of uh, uh, contribute it to yeah well i mean right now we look pretty healthy we're doing our thing you know there's no issues you know as for anabolics right now so far you know i mean that I, that I can tell what what do you think is like you know got got these people so wrapped up in like talking bad like doctors coming on you know saying these people should be arrested for you know telling people how to take steroids or anything like that what do you what is your takes on that because for me well, it's not it's not accurate well, it's hard to say because, like, if we're t if we fast forward to now, like mm -hmm. times like now, I mean, the fact of the matter is, we do have more deaths mm -hmm. with bodybuilders than we ever have. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a few guys out there in 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 the industry that get praised for things that they're basically experimenting on bodybuilders, mm -hmm. you know. And there's really no manual. There's no uh, book that teaches people how to use steroids mm -hmm. because Technically, steroids were not designed for bodybuilding. Right. None of them were. Yeah, like horses. And, exactly. Yeah. Some of them are, are vet. Mm -hmm. Others are, are, are made for particular 
diseases yeah. or issues that someone might have that they're deficient in, but not for bodybuilding. So right. there's no real way to, to kind of determine. It's kind of all bro science is what we call, you know? Yeah. So just like with anything, you know, bodybuilding, you know, we all want to be big, right? Mm. And a lot of the guys, you know, attribute, you know, well, a little bit did this. So maybe if I take more, it'll do this. Mm. And we all know that more does not equal bigger or better. No. And so what I feel is a lot of these coaches out there that don't have a lot of experience, but they might have gotten lucky with someone they, they experimented on. Mm -hmm. uh, they take that same protocol and they'll give it to another athlete or another person and, you know, uh, you know, probably fuck some of these people up. Big time. You know, but at the same time, you know, most of these bodybuilders, you're, you're an adult. I mean, you know what you're getting yourself into, so you can't necessarily blame the coach. I wouldn't say blame you know? them, no. I mean, yeah. well, I mean, I, I could say if, like, you're unexperienced and you're trying to give people diets, I think that's a no-no. I don't think you should be even touching a person's, you know, if you don't know how to look at lab work, if you don't know how Absolutely. to, you know, yeah. when it's, I mean, and, and like some of these people that do actually get lucky, sometimes these, these sometimes it's just like the show, no one showed up to compete against them really, mm -hmm. they're, they're like, you know, would yeah. do well Win against by them. by default. Win yeah. by default or they wouldn't even listen to their coach and they would go through somebody else and do their own thing. Yes. Um, and carry their name. Sometimes people will just come in and just claim something. You know, just so they can boost up their numbers. Of course. And there's also some dietitians out there that, you know, have cookie cutter diets that just send the same diet to yeah, a bunch of people too. You yes. know? And that's it's a it's a hard it's a hard thing to do because as as a competitor, you never know if you're getting the right treatment sometimes unless Absolutely. the coach is one on one with you. I mean, for me personally, I don't think a, like a coach could diet down more than three people per show. I mean, I mean personally and show them the love and you know, the, the energy that they need to focus to be the absolute best on it. I mean, for you to be a dietitian and do, you know, 10 competitors into one show, I, I just kind of think that's like, that's overkill. And I don't think. No, you're... absolutely. Uh, because, you know, fast forward now, that, that's mm -hmm. what I do now. So I am a coach. I, I, I run yeah. a, a, a prep team. You did my diet. Yeah, yeah I, that's right. That's right. You stuck with I'm me. Bad. I'm sorry. You did my first show. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did yeah, your yeah, first yeah. show. And, that's again, right, and guess what? Yes. We won, baby. That's right. Yeah. I do remember that. <laughs> we ended up going to uh, uh, nationals too, yeah. right? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Went to nationals right, right after that. In Atlanta. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you came out there with That's me, bro. Right. Yeah, you yeah, forgot about was, that, huh? I, I, yeah, man, I remember all that now, yeah. Yeah, my mom yeah. crazy. Ah, yeah, that, that was fun, man. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so so, so, what, what, would you, what are your thoughts on basically, you know, these, these people bashing steroids? Like, these people, these crazy people. Because for me, it's like, all right, yeah, you're a doctor, and these people are coming to see you because they're fucked up. But they're only coming to see you because they're fucked up. That's not mm -hmm. the majority of it. Like for me, I never thought steroids were even that bad. You know, as long as you were just monitoring and your body could accept them. Some people can't accept them. Some people don't process steroids properly, have way more side effects. Some people shouldn't be on them. But, you know, then there's that extreme aspect of it where people just go super crazy, try to just do so much stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, you're going to you're going to run into problems. But I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like as far as doctors bashing it or whatever? Well, I can tell you one thing. I mean, I definitely don't condone it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to sit here and say, hey, kids, you know, you should be using steroids. No, or never not. Of course no, not. Of no, course not. Never that. But, I mean, I think, you know, there's a there's a documentary out called mm -hmm. Bigger, Faster, Stronger. And mm -hmm. if people actually really want to know about anabolics, you should watch that video because, mm -hmm. you know, steroids has gotten a negative connotation to it. Yeah, people used to think it was like heroin or something yeah, like you know? that. They thought it was like drugs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Worse. But, I mean, it is a drug, and, and it, yes, it could kill you, but Recre anything can not, kill you. Yeah, but it's not recreational. Exactly. They, they made it seem you like know? it was like people do this to get high, or you take a shot, and you're going to go pick up a car and Right. It's somebody. nothing like that at all. Yeah. You know? It's nothing like that at all. Just, but, it, but it drives attention. It drives yes. the media. It drives the clicks. It's yes. clickbait. It's all this extra stuff. That, like, right. You know, every everyone puts a 10 on a 2. Even, it, all the news people, everyone puts a 10 on a 2. Yeah. Course. You know, so that's you know, kinda... I, I think there's a time and place for it. You know, if one, if, if someone is interested in using anabolics, uh, you know, I, I would suggest studying and speaking to as many people as you can before you 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 cross that line. You mm -hmm. know, uh, really, if you want to do steroids, the smartest thing one could do is constantly get blood work. Yeah, because you might look amazing on the outside, but you're taking steroids, and if you're not understanding how to use them properly, or you're staying on them for too long. Mm -hmm. You look amazing on the inside, but you're pretty much going to be corroded on the inside is like the way I say yeah, it, you know? Yeah. So blood work is absolutely important. Getting with someone that really knows that's been there, done that. That cares. That cares. That absolutely. has to care. Yes, the that understands. has to care. Yeah, so you know, if you're going to take steroids and say you're going to be working with a coach and they're not immediately telling you to get your blood work done, 
go the other way yeah. because they don't know what they're talking about. If they're not calling you, giving you one-on-one love, Absolutely. respect, support, sh- showing, you know, I mean, if you just got a guy, you just text and then they throw back an email and they throw back an email or they throw back an email. I mean, you want the guy, you know, like my man Stan right here, he would call me every day, you know, check on me every day, yes. you know? So right. it's like, you want someone like that, regardless or not, whether you're going to win every show, if you can find a dietitian, that's good. And it's there for you. That speaks way more volumes than anyone who's just going to take you on, throw you in the back of an email list, and just, you know, ch- spend two minutes and throw you an email. Absolutely. You know? the big